Welcome to Hope at Seven. Uh, so funny. You know, it, it is so weird just talking to uh, a computer uh, without seeing faces. But uh, but I know I know you're out there and I know that the Lord's at work in all our lives. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to put it out there that uh, I'm saying good morning to real people. Sure rather be sitting in a restaurant having a coffee with you, that's for sure. <laughs> that's okay. Um, welcome and uh, happy Tuesday. God is good all the time. That's right, all the time. He's good. And so uh, good morning to you too. It's my good friend Tracy Tinkis from Quinnell. How about that? Good to see you, kid. Hey, um, today we're in Psalm 74. Isn't that cool? Um, I told Santa this morning while we were uh, um, sitting there having our coffee before she left. One thing that's really amazing to me about um, the Psalms as going through them with you is how so many of the prayers uh, that these these writers pray um, are answered when Jesus comes. So, so many of the, the, the things that they're asking God for, the, the conundrums they find themselves in, or the problems they find themselves in, they're answered in Christ and when He comes, which means that a lot of these Psalms are prophetic in nature. It's also occurring to me that that means that a lot of the prayers that we pray right now will be answered when He comes back. Because God has chosen to save the world through two advents. The first advent when Jesus was born. The second advent when he comes back. That's what he's chosen to do. And he is our hope. Hang on and watch this with me. You're going to love this by the Kobe kids. Christ is our hope. <coughs> our hope in life and death Christ alone Christ alone what is our only confidence that our souls to him belong who holds our days within his hand what comes apart from him what will keep us to the end? The love of Christ in which we stand. Oh, sing hallelujah. Our hope springs eternal. Oh, sing hallelujah. Now and ever we Christ, our hope in life and death. What truth can calm the troubled soul? God is good, God is good. Where is His grace and goodness known? In our great Redeemer's blood, who holds our faith? When fears arise, who stands above the stormy trial? Who sends the waves that bring us nigh unto the shore, the rock of Christ? Oh, sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal. Our hope in life and death. The Kobe ING music gang from uh, YouTube. Love those guys. They um they are a really good band and they're doing a lot of good music out there. I really appreciate their work. That's the answer. Christ alone. 
So when we pray, we got to realize that all the prayers that the psalmist prayed were answered in Christ, and all the prayers that we pray will be answered in Christ as well, now and when he returns. He's our hope, Christ alone. The only hero the world needs, the only hero the world has, the only hope that you and I have, the only hope that the world has, is Jesus. There's no other answer. God, why have you rejected us so long? The psalmist says in Psalm 74. Why is your anger so intense against the sheep of your own pasture? He's feeling like God's angry at us because the times are tough. But he says, will you walk through the awful ruins of the city? See how evil has destroyed your sanctuary. There your enemies shouted their victorious battle cries against us. He's saying, Lord, things are so discouraging right now. You and me are feeling that. That this world is not everything that it, it should be. And um, the thing is, is that God has not abandoned us. He's faithful. And if you feel like he's not around, that's just how you feel. That's important to remember. The fact is that he's still here. So when Asaph writes this and says, Lord, would you come down and walk through the city? Would you see, please, how long we're putting up with this hard time, this evil that's going on? Um, and then he asks God in verse 11, why do you hold back your strong right hand, Lord? Excuse me. Unleash your powerful fist and destroy them. See, he's asking God to do something about the evil, which is good. Prayer, remember, it's never one and done. It's, it's a constant in your life. It helps you fight the battle. It helps you fight discouragement. Um, Peter said, I can tell you why God hasn't completely destroyed evil. Because the psalmist asks in Psalm 11, why do you hold back your strong right hand? Unleash your powerful fist and destroy evil. Peter said, you should never lose sight of this fact, dear friends, that time is not the same with the Lord as it is with us. To him a day may be a thousand years, and a thousand years only a day. It is not that he's delinquent about keeping his own promise, as some men seem to think. The fact is, is that he's very patient. He has no wish that any man should be destroyed. He wishes that all men should come to repent. Yet it remains true that the day of the Lord will come as suddenly as and unexpectedly as a thief. In that day, the heavens will disappear in a terrific tearing blast. The very elements will disintegrate in heat, and the earth and all that is in it will be burnt up to nothing. So here's the thing. God's patient, but evil is going to get what's coming to it. Justice will come. And so Peter, my allergies are acting up today. I got this dust allergy. It's annoying. After um, Asaph asks the question, God, when are you going to show up and do something about this situation? Um, he reminds himself who he's talking to. A, God's patient. B, God has always been there. And he goes to verse 12. You, O God, are my king from ages past, bringing salvation to the earth. So he reminds himself who he's talking to. Secondly, he says, Lord, when we needed you, when our back was against the wall... You split the sea by your strength. You smashed the heads of the sea monsters. Interesting choice of language, right? And get this verse. This is interesting. A little sidebar. You crushed the heads of Leviathan and let the desert animals eat him. A lot of people think that verses like that in the Bible are talking about uh, the dinosaurs, but the people back then didn't call them that. They called them the Leviathan. And um, now think... Put, put it this way, picture in your mind a battle between you with a spear or a bow and arrow, okay, or even a chariot against a T-Rex, okay? Like, my goodness, you wouldn't stand a chance with a sword against a T-Rex, right? But what the picture is here, whether it's symbolism or in actuality what happened is um, only God could defeat a monster bigger than you. You and me right now are facing a monster way bigger than us. And Asaph is looking in the past and seeing how God crushed the heads of monsters. Because God can do what we can't do. 
And that's why we come to him. And that's why in verse 16, when it says, both day and night belong to you. Both day, when I can see what's going on, and night, when I can't see. They belong to you, both of them. And I'm going to have to trust you. How long are you going to put up with this, Lord? How long? How long? Well, get this, guys. It made me think of something in Revelation 6.10. Even the saints in heaven are asking the same question. They were put to death for their faith long ago. And Revelation 6.10 says that the saints in heaven say the same thing. O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you judge the evil ones that belong to this world and avenge our blood for what they've done to us? Even the saints in heaven who are face to face with God have to wait until the appointed time for his justice and his resolution of things. Saints in heaven have to trust him the same way that saints on earth, you and me, have to trust him. Isn't that interesting? And verse 20, Asaph says, Lord, please remember your covenant promises. Lord, don't give up on us. The good news is, is that he never will. So don't you give up on him. Don't let the drowned trodden be humiliated again, Lord. Instead, let the poor and needy praise your name. It's important to pray for people. And arise, O Lord, defend your cause. Remind God of his promises. He'll never forget them. But when you remind God of his promises, you remind yourself of his promises, right? Remember, Lord, these, these fools, they insult you. He's talking about rich, evil men that have destroyed the innocent. Don't overlook what they've said, Lord, or their growing uproar. Now, to me, this made me think of something. I was um, running kids club, and I was playing a game with some kids. And you know what it's like when you're an adult, and you got the basketball, and the kids are trying to get the ball away from you, and you're just like dribbling the ball, and they're, they lunge for it, you switch hands, just because you're older, right? It's kind of fun for, for a bit of a game. And uh, I'm playing a game with one of the kids in the church, and uh, this, this little guy says, Come on, Pastor Bob! <laughs> it just made me laugh. Um, well, guess what? It's okay to pray to God and say, Come on, Lord, when are things going to get resolved? Your Father in Heaven knows you're frustrated, okay? But here, it's a good idea to see this frustration in verse 23 and work your way backwards. John Piper says to make sure that you work your way backwards when you're studying the Bible, okay? The, first, the frustration in verse 23 is, Lord, don't overlook what these evil men are doing. Don't overlook what's going on here. Please help us. Work your way backwards. At the beginning of the psalm in verse 3, so verse 23 to verse 3, okay? Um, Asaph says to the Lord, Walk through the awful ruins of the city and see how evil has destroyed your sanctuary. There your enemy shouted victorious cries. This is what happened. He heard that prayer. He answered it. Jesus came down and he entered his city. And he walked its streets and he saw the hurting people lined up on the side of the streets watching him carry his cross. And then it was the enemy that heard his victorious cry from the cross when he said, it is finished. Jesus has won the war. He is our champion. He did walk our surly streets. He did walk the darkness that we do. And he came out victorious. And that day when he died on the cross, he broke death in half. And he rose from the dead Sunday morning to show that he was victorious. Here's the good news. He's patient, waiting for people to come home. Pray for them. Keep knocking on heaven's door, but trust him because he is the answer. And that's why there's hope today. He is our champion. Let's pray. I pray, Father, that, Lord, we will keep our eyes on you and not think that you've given up. Help our emotions to come in line with the truth today. I thank you that you entered 
the very heart of darkness and that you destroyed it and your light is taking over the world. We love you, God, and thank you for your hope. In Jesus' name, amen. So folks, talk to him, cling to him, realize that he is good and that Jesus is king, okay? I'll see you tonight. Hey, tell your kids about uh, Kids Zone. Okay, Kids Zone is going to be at 6 p.m. live on Facebook. If you got any kids in your life that want to uh, see Bible stories, sing some fun songs, and uh, Kids Zone's at 6, and then Hope at 7 p.m. with me and Jermiko tonight. It's a triple, uh, it's a hat trick day. Love you guys. Have a good day. Have a good Tuesday. And we will see you soon.
What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name.